So Donald Trump's nephew, Fred Trump, wrote an article for Time. If you guys haven't read it yet, I highly recommend that you do. It's about an 11 minute read, but once again, we get a peek behind the curtain and we see just how cruel Donald Trump can be. Ever since he came down that escalator, he's been going over the top to be as cruel as he possibly can and his audience loves him for it. I'm sure they will find a way to excuse this too, but folks, this is low even for Trump. Uh, when I read this, I thought, man, even for him, this is pretty dang low. So his nephew, Fred, has a son, William, who's disabled. He's had seizures ever since he was a baby. It took him 15 years to figure out what was causing these seizures, so Fred dedicated his life to helping folks with disabilities, him and his wife. When Trump got elected, he says to himself, well, my uncle's in the White House, and so maybe he can help me. Maybe he can help folks with disabilities. So they go to have a meeting with Trump, and while the meeting was going on, Fred said it looked as though Trump was engaged, seemed like he actually cared about what was going on. But after the meeting, he asked to speak to Fred again. And when he did, he calls him over to the side and says, hey, and he says this, and I quote, those people, the shape they're in, all the expenses, maybe those kinds of people should just die. Yeah, he actually said that to his nephew, knowing his nephew had a son with disabilities. With all those expenses, maybe those people should just die. What that tells you is that all Donald Trump really cares about is the money here, folks. That's, that's the only place his mind goes, is how much are we paying for this? The guy doesn't have one ounce of compassion in his body, doesn't have one ounce of empathy, but somehow he's the leader of the evangelical movement. How the hell did that happen? Now, you're probably thinking, oh, this story couldn't get any worse. Well, when it's Trump, it can always get worse. So they had a fund set up for William that was starting to go dry, and when it did, he reaches out to Eric Trump, and Eric Trump says, well, just talk to my dad about it. So when he's talking to Trump for the second time, Trump says to him, I don't know, he doesn't recognize you. Maybe you should just let him die and move to Florida. So he tells his nephew to let his son die and just move because he doesn't recognize you, what's it matter? Can you imagine saying that to your own nephew, knowing what your nephew had been through? Now I know what a lot of people's gonna say out in MAGA land, they're gonna say, well now we don't know if this is true or not. I mean, we ain't got him on audio or video. I would say it doesn't matter when we show him doing things on video and let you guys hear him saying things on audio, that don't matter either. So I don't really know that that would make a difference. But there's gonna be people out there that's gonna say, well, I don't think he would really say that. I mean, surely he ain't that cold hearted. And there's people out there that would say, well, you know, I think that guy's just trying to get his name in the paper. I think he's just trying to sell a book, man. Well, if you was really gonna to try to get your name in a paper and sell a book, do you really think you would do that if you spent a lifetime trying to help a disabled child through this world? You're gonna put its name out there and your name out there and you're gonna you're gonna bring that to the public's light. You're gonna let everyone see that. I can't imagine anyone would let their child's name be dragged through the mud like it's gonna be. So I can't see that he's doing it just to put his name in the paper and also, for all the ones that says, well, I can't believe that Trump would ever say something like this. I got a story for you guys. Back when uh, the shooting happened in South Carolina where the kids shot nine people in the church and they took the Confederate flag down in South Carolina, a bunch of good old boys around my part of the world protested. They all got their Confederate flags and they did a march across town. The same day this march was happening, I was on the other side of town playing at a, at a concert. I was opening up for three Southern bands, Jimmy Van Zant, Blackfoot, and Molly Hatchet. So guess where all the good old boys came when they got done waving their flags on the other side of town? They came to the Southern Rock Show. And now I'm sitting there just looking out at the sea of Confederate flags. And in between acts, there was a DJ there from Florida who was, you know, introducing the bands and th stuff. And this DJ just out of nowhere says, what do you guys think about Donald Trump running for president? And they started cheering. And he goes, yeah, man, I like this guy. He speaks his mind. And they cheered louder. And I said to myself, oh crap, if he resonates with these people, we're screwed. If he resonates with these people, we are in for it. And sure enough, he resonated with those people. He empowered those people to be their cruel and hateful self. And we saw him go out there and mock a disabled reporter. They've tried to gaslight us ever since, but we saw it with our own eyes. They saw him mock a disabled reporter, but they will question the story and go, would he really say that about a disabled person? They saw him mock John McCain more than once, say that he preferred prisoners of war who didn't get shot or didn't get caught. And then later made fun of McCain because McCain couldn't raise his arm. They saw him do that. And then they questioned if he really called veterans suckers and losers. But what's funny to me is when Donald Trump tells them that he's gonna be cruel and mean, they cheer for that. 
yeah, you know, he was supposed to turn the temperature down. We were supposed to see a changed man ever since Philadelphia, or ever since Pennsylvania, excuse me. But is that what happened? No, Trump's right back out there being cruel, and he tells the crowd he's going to be cruel, and they cheer it on. Take a look. They say, something happened to me when I got shot. I became nice. And when you're dealing with these people, they're very dangerous people. When you're dealing with them, you can't be too nice. You really can't be. So if you don't mind, I'm not going to be nice. Is that okay? So he tells them he's going to be mean and they cheer for him, but they can't believe he would actually say something mean. They cheer for him every time he insults someone. They cheer for him every time he mocks someone. They love to own the libs. They love better than anything in this world to make fun of us and own us every day. But yet they can't believe he would say something cruel. They just cheered for him to be cruel. He asked them, do you want me to be mean? And yeah, we want you to be mean, but we can't believe you would say something mean. That, th this is real life, folks. This is the world that we are living in now. A guy tells his nephew to let his disabled son die. Do you know how many people out there raise disabled children? Do you know how many people out there have disabled people in their families that they have to take care of on a daily basis? And do you realize that there are programs put in place to help these people? And do you realize that if Project 2025 gets implemented on day one, that all those programs are going to drop and go away? So to everybody out there going, nah, I don't think he'd say something like that, man. I don't really think he would. Go read Project 2025. Go understand what it is that they intend to do if he's reelected. They intend to gut every program that helps people like that. So, I mean, it, even if he didn't say it, let me just go ahead and give it to you this way. If he didn't say that, if Fred Trump is just making this whole thing up, he's still going to cut off the programs that helps those people, and then what's going to happen to them? He can't care about them, or he wouldn't take away those safety nets. And I know there's people out there, well, I don't think he would do that. I don't think he would do that. And meanwhile, they stand back and cheer when he asks them, do you want me to be mean? Yeah. But we can't believe you would be. You can't make this stuff up, folks. You, you really can't. But we are in for the long haul, folks. After Donald Trump is out of the political arena, we are going to be left to clean up the mess. And I will be an old man sitting in this chair. Maybe not this chair, it's falling apart. But <laughs> I'll be an old man <laughs> sitting in a chair. And my grandchildren and great-grandchildren will be sitting around my knee, and I'll still be going, kids, I don't know how the hell that really... I don't know how we made it through that time in American history. But... Stupid people were empowered. I really hope that we don't end up like the movie Idiocracy, even though I think we're definitely we're definitely right there in the middle of it. I hope we don't end up just all sitting around drinking Brondo and nothing's growing, but that's where we're going to be headed if Project 2025 gets his way. And again, that's not me trying to spread hyperbole or get people worked up. You just would think that there would be one moment in time where they would pause and say, maybe he went too far. Maybe that was a little bit low. How can you look at your disabled family member and be okay with that? 